Good morning. Human history has been full of wars. From the minute Adam and Eve stepped out of the Garden of Eden and Cain killed Abel, wickedness then went from bad to worse. And in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, it says, Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that the thoughts in his heart fashioned nothing but wickedness all day long. It was so bad, he had to destroy that world in a flood. Noah came through it into a world we like to think of peace. It didn't last. Humans soon um, developed empires, the Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Chaldeans, and we had one war after another. The Israelites moved into Palestine. And if you read through the books of Kings, the first and second book of Kings, makes for difficult reading because it was one war after another. But there's a very good lesson in there, in that if they had done what God had asked them to do, there wouldn't have been these wars. Then we come to the day of Jesus. He taught us how to be peaceful. Uh, he told us what God wanted us to do and that if we wanted a world without war, we would do what God asked us to do. Did it last? Christianity started off nicely, but it, no, it didn't last. And so we come to the book of Jude, or rather, sorry, the letter of Jude. This was written sometime after Jesus' death. And in verse 3, you'll note this. He wanted to write to the brothers about the salvation that we all share. But he said, I've been forced to write to you now and appeal to you to fight hard for the faith. Why? Because certain people have infiltrated among you. And he goes on to say how bad these people were, that they were using Christianity for their own ends. So Christianity, or religion now, enters the arena of war, and we have religious wars from then on. Um, the popes waged wars. The uh, inquisitions, the um, crusades were ill-fated and ill-founded on scripture. So we come to today, we have World War I, World War II, the, world, the Second World War was supposed to end all wars, but of course it didn't. We're now focused on Ukraine, but there are wars everywhere else, in the Yemen, in the Horn of Africa, anywhere you look. How do we cope with this as Christians? How do we cope? Well, unfortunately, there's one more war to come. Well, I say, unfortunately, this one is going to end all wars. This one really will end all wars. It's in Revelation 19. And we start in verse 11, where it talks about Jesus Christ, who is a warrior for justice. Jesus is the only one who has the authority to wage a proper war, but it's against wickedness and he wins. Now that's in the future but not too far away. And then the Bible says we enter a time of peace when God will be with us and he wipes out all our tears. There'll be no pain, no ill health. So let's go back to how we cope with this at the moment. And we look at Romans 12 and verse 12. You might find this amusing. It says, if you have hope, this will make you cheerful. Well, it needs to, after what I've just been through, with the details of wars and so on. So what I would like you to do is ask yourselves, is, is my hope absolutely certain? And if it's not, what can you do to make it certain? Because it's only with hope that we're going to get through these difficult times. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has given us his love and through his grace, such inexhaustible comfort and sure hope, absolutely certain hope is given to us through God's grace. We can't earn it. It's a free gift. It's definitely going to come. And it says this hope will comfort us and strengthen us in everything that we do or say. We need to be absolutely certain of this hope that's to come. 
We will face trials, as Paul said in Romans 12. He goes, um, after having hope that makes us cheerful, do not give up if trials come. Keep our eyes on that hope. The hope was given to us quite early on in the book of Psalms. Psalm 46, where um, in verses 8 and 9, it says that God puts an end to wars. He breaks the bow. He snaps the, peer, the spear. Sorry, He puts shields to the flame. And the similar thing in Isaiah, where it talks about us learning God's ways. And if we do that, well, we're definitely going to do that. It says, then we will hammer our swords into plowshares, our spears into sickles. Nation will not lift up sword against nation. There will be no more training for war. We can be absolutely certain that this time is coming. And it's that hope that will get us through the difficult days that are to come. So thank you for watching. And I'm sorry it was a little bit dismal this morning. But if we can focus on our hope, this will get us through anything with God's grace and his love. Thank you for watching this morning.